So in this part of the tutorial, I'm going to start developing the applications backend. I'm using the Eclipse IDE for Java EE developers and in the package explorer, I'll right click and create a new Spring Boot project by selecting the Spring Startup Project option. And I'm going to call this validation backend. The default settings here are okay for me. I'll click on next. And here we need to add the dependencies. We are going to be using Spring Data JPA to map the Java classes to the database and embedded H2 database. And in order to have the Spring REST dependency, we also need this web dependency here. And finally, I'll add this DevTools dependency, which will automatically dictate changes in our class path and restart the embedded Tomcat server. Finish. So the project creation is done. I'll start by creating a domain object. I'll expand the project folder and expand this source main Java folder. And inside here, I'll right click on this package and create a new Java class. I would like to have that in a separate package and I'll call it user. Finish. This user class is going to have the following fields, private, string email which will be the user's email private string name private string password private string age and finally private string phone number Next, I'll generate getters and setters for these fields. So I'll click here on source and select generate getters and setters. I'll select all of this and click on OK. And I'll also generate an overloaded constructor as well as a default constructor. So once more, I'll click on source and select generate constructor using fields. I'll select all of this and click on OK. And for the default constructor, I'll deselect all of this and click on OK. Next, I'll map this class to the database by adding the add entity annotation from javax.persistence. By so doing, a table called user will be created in the database. And the primary key of that table is going to be this email. So I'll annotate it with add id annotation to make it into a primary key. Next, I'm going to add validation annotations to these fields. For the email, I'm going to annotate it with add email annotation. This should be from javax.validation.constraints. And this is to ensure that this field is an email address. If it is not an email, we are going to get an error along with a default error message. So I'm going to overwrite the default error message by setting here the message to please enter a valid email. I'm also going to annotate this field with the at not blank annotation, which is to ensure that this field is not empty before it is being saved in the database. Now it is worth knowing here that this id annotation takes care of that but with the not blank annotation we have an easy way of passing back a message to the client i'm going to set the message here to please enter an email this should be enter or maybe enter your email so next, I'll just go ahead and copy this annotation here and add it on the name. Then I'll change this to please enter your name. I'll also add here the add size annotation and set the minimum value to two characters. The message here, I'll set it to Your name must be wrong. Then I'll copy this 
and add it on the password field. This should be, please enter your password. And this size should be at least four characters. And I'll just have here invalid password. Enter at least four characters. For the age, I'm also going to use the not blank annotation. And this message here should be, please enter your age. I also want to ensure that the age contains only digits. And in order to do that, I'll add here the add pattern annotation. And I'll set the regular expression to the following. So backward slash, backward slash D. This is to ensure that we have only digits here. And I'll also add the following color braces and set it to two, meaning the digit should contain only two numbers. Then I'll also just go ahead and copy all of these and use it on the number. So I'll set this to at least seven and this should be please enter your mobile number or just please enter your phone number. So in the next video, I'm going to create an interface for this class and I'm also going to implement the REST controller. Until then, see you.